Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman from LearnGPR.com and I'm going to give you a video today that is basically an answer to a question that we got from one of our customers over in London. So uh, they had a question which was, excuse me, why is there horizontal banding when you are collecting your GPR data, right? And then the sort of part B of their question is how do you remove it? You know, what kind of filter can you apply to remove it? And how does that filter work? Um, and so we'll start with A, right? So horizontal banding, right? So A is going to be, right, Y. And then B will be, um, right, how to remove it. So there are three ways I'm going to give you that, or three sources that account for why there's horizontal banding in your GPR data, okay? So what you might have is, right, you might have your profile, okay, into the ground, and this is your ground surface, you know, right here, okay? So that's your ground surface. Here is your GPR, and it's gonna go in this direction. Um, so let's say here's your pipe, and there's gonna be, you know, a, a hyperbolic reflection off of your pipe, okay? Well, what you're gonna see potentially is, you know, some horizontal banding in your data, okay? Maybe some bands here, you know, um, all right? And sometimes what will happen is the horizontal banding will, you know, obscure your uh, targets of interest, right? And, you know, it could be very difficult to see your actual target when there is horizontal banding. So why does it happen? Right? Why does this horizontal banding come into your data? It's annoying. Why does it happen? Uh, all right, so here are your three ways, right? Three, as I promised. Number one is the system itself internally is going to produce some noise that generally uh, uh, produces this horizontal banding. So every single GPR system is going to produce some internal noise. It's going to have some effect on the quality of your data, and it's going to produce some horizontal banding. So that's number one, okay? Number two is you, right? So here's your GPR cart, all right? And that's, now we're gonna, and here's you, right? You got your two arms on it, all right? And uh, you're, you're pushing. I'm, I was never an artist, just from now on. I was never an artist. Nonetheless, that's you, okay? That's you, okay? You, and of course you're out there surveying, so you have a big smile on your face. Now as you're pushing this along, <coughs> what's going on? The wave, right, which is spreading out, right, from your GPR, is actually spreading out along the ground as well. And so some of that energy is coming back, it's gonna bounce off of you, it's gonna reflect off of you, bounce back to the antenna, and when it bounces back to the antenna, it's going to record a reflection. So how does that produce a horizontal, right? So let's say that this, right, is time, all right? It's time, and you're getting a reflection at, whatever, two nanoseconds into a travel time throughout your entire uh, uh, transect. Well, you're always the same distance from your own antenna. So as the, as the signal comes out and it's spreading out, okay, and it hits off of you, it reflects off of you, and goes back to the antenna, it's still gonna take, let's say, two nanoseconds for it to hit off of you, bounce off of you, and go back to the antenna. Doesn't matter if you're here, how long is it gonna take? Two, two nanoseconds. What about when you're over here? All right, so you've pushed it along. All right, here you are. All right. Still smiling. Right now, how long is it taking? It's still going to take the same amount of time. So whether you're here, it's two nanoseconds, and whether you're here, it's two nanoseconds. So you are a source of noise in your own GPR data, and this is also why you should do your best to kind of rid yourself of metal and other objects. Your cell phone could be on; it could influence uh, uh, your 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 GPR data. Um, you know, do what you can to minimize the effects that you're going to have on your own GPR data set. It's hard enough to interpret. Do what you can to minimize the noise. So that's number two, right? Number one was the antenna itself. Number two is you. 
Number three, right, number three that you have to be aware of is something else around you that is equidistant from your antenna throughout your entire transect. And I'll give you an example. So let's say you're pushing it along, and this happened to me, you're pushing your antenna along, right, and you're still going this way right afterwards. Um, but I was pushing it alongside parallel to a railroad track. Excuse me, that railroad track is going, it was equidistant no matter where I was in my transect. In the beginning of my transect, it was three meters to my left. At the end of my transect, it was still three meters to my left. And everywhere in between, it was three meters to my left. And so what was happening was the wave was spreading out across the ground surface, bouncing off of the railroad track, back to the antenna, and, you know, whatever it was. So let's say it was seven nanoseconds. I'm getting this streak here. Now, so the question is, right, is that an actual target? Is it a geological layer? It can be difficult to interpret. In the case, you know, that I'm talking about, obviously it wasn't. It was that there was something running parallel to me that was producing a signal that created a horizontal reflection event in my data. Uh, but even though the railroad was at the ground surface, it still was three meters away. So it was taking some time uh, in order for it to bounce off of the railroad, reflect off of the railroad, and come back to my antenna. So those are the three ways. There are other ways uh, as well, but we're going we're gonna to start with those three, because those are three that I think you really, really need to be aware of. But how do you get rid of this then? How do you get rid of this? Well, there's something called a background filter. Okay, a background filter. And what a background filter does is it removes this horizontal banding. Okay, it removes the horizontal banding. So if you had a background filter on your system or you've used a background filter in post-processing, what that is for is to remove these kinds of things. So you apply your background filter and hopefully what happens is something <laughs> along these lines, right, where this stuff gets removed and what you're left with is your signal, right, from your target of interest. Okay, in this case, it's a hyperbola from a pipe. You're left with your signal. Um, and now you can interpret a clean data uh, set, right? You can interpret a clean GPR profile. So that's what it does. The background filter removes it. Well, how does it do that? Well, it basically takes right, the amplitude of the reflection at every given nanosecond interval or every given depth interval, and it takes, okay, at you know, three, let's say three nanoseconds is this line. At three nanoseconds, okay, what is the average? And then basically it removes the average from just three nanoseconds and just leaves whatever is above or below the average. So in this case, the average isn't zero, right? Because you're getting a reflection, let's say, off of the railroad. So your average is something above zero. So what it does, it takes the average, removes it, and makes it zero. Now, when in the same at three nanoseconds, you're actually getting a reflection off of your target, that's going to be greater than the average because it's a more substantial reflection event. And so it removes the average amplitude uh, uh, from this depth and only keeps what's above and below that, which is supposed to leave you with your potential targets of interest. So that's how it works. It removes that average. Now, I'm going to give you one major, major, major cautionary a uh, uh, piece of advice, because this is where I think people can really potentially screw themselves up. And very few people actually know how to use a background filter properly. They press the button and they, they remove it. And usually that's fine. Usually that's fine. But if you're actually looking for layers, you can remove the layers that you're trying to identify. Or if you're looking for something that's, that's reasonably uh, uh, linear in its reflection geometry, you can remove that. So you have to be really careful that when you use your background filter, you're not removing... So here's an example. Let's say instead right, of going you know, right over it perpendicular, you... Here's your pipe. Okay? And you're actually getting right, a reflection event then right, that is going to be linear, right, so your reflection event is going to look like this, 
when you're on top of it, if you're running uh, parallel to the pipe, right, you're on top of it, that's what your reflection in your vent's gonna look like. It's gonna be parallel, it's not gonna be a hyperbola. So if you do a background filter, you can remove the event that you're actually really interested in identifying. So you need to be careful. Now when you input your parameters, in many systems you have the ability to say how many traces you want to input, right, into your background filter in order to remove. And what it will do then is remove anything that's a reflection event, a linear reflection event, that's more than that number of traces. So you need to know how many, you know, what you set your system up with. So if you set your system up as, you know, it's going to record every two centimeters, then that means there's 50 traces, let's say, per meter. If you have targets that might be two meters long and you put 50 as the number for your background filter, it's going to remove your target. It's a little bit complicated uh, um, when I'm explaining it this way, but it's something you need to be aware of. We're actually, I'm doing a webinar um, on December 15th. So you can go to learngpr.com uh, and sign up for that webinar and, uh, uh, and get in on it. But I'm gonna go into actual examples of, of, of this and we're gonna go into some actual data where you're gonna see how I, I, I do the uh, background filter. So if you're interested in learning some more about it, make sure you get on that webinar or go to the learngpr.com website and uh, uh, enroll in GPR Basics. It's our core, fundamental course. It's our premier course. Got people from all over the world who are in it now, benefiting from it. And I go into a, an entire hour's worth of processing. But that's how this works. So that's why you have horizontal banding in your data set. That's how you remove it. And then that's also one word of caution, not to remove targets that you're actually interested in because you can remove them. So be aware of the parameters that you put into your background filter. So if you've used this, then comment below and I wanna know kind of your experiences with background filters or other filters that you've used. Comment below this video. And uh, um, actually in this, below this video in the summary, I'm gonna put a link to the sign up for the uh, two hour webinar that we're gonna do on December 15th. Um, which is focused on utility locating, but it's going to go into some fundamentals of GPR. It's going to go into some basic data processing for GPR data sets um, specific to utility locating. And then we're going to go over a whole bunch of uh, examples from utility locating. So I'll put that in the comment, um, I'm sorry, in the, uh, uh, in the video summary um, below. And if you like this video, if you felt like it was valuable, please like this video, that if you like it, like it, and hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to our channel, and you will get these videos every single uh, um, week. You'll get notifications for them. And if you haven't done so yet, pop over to learngpr.com and put in your name and email, and we will send you these right to your inbox. So I hope that you enjoyed this, and I will see you on the next video.